At 16 years old, the entire world was in front of Hannah Trulove. She was just learning to drive and had dreams of one day becoming a veterinarian. But instead, this young Georgia teen suffered a horrible death. Michelle Sagona is here now with this troubling murder mystery. Matt, Hannah's family is convinced that she knew who her killer or killers were. And today they are helping Crime Watch Daily piece together all the clues. In these dark Georgia woods lies a mystery. And a trail that's led police to a dead end. We followed many, many leads because at that point we felt anything was possible. I think of all the scenarios, you know, that could have happened and what she endured. I mean, it's just too much. If you ever met 16-year-old Hannah True Love, you would be struck by her kindness and beauty. Hannah is a very unique individual in the best way. Hannah was outgoing. She was a popular girl and had a beautiful smile. She's extremely bright, loving, compassionate just sort of uh, a free-spirited kind of person. Hannah is the child of divorced parents, Mona Harris and Jeff Trulove. Living with her mother in Gainesville, Georgia, she constantly chatted about her life to friends online and posted selfies. Hannah began leaving cryptic messages about some unwanted attention she was getting. Did you know Hannah was tweeting about a stalker? I don't know because she was doing that um, without my knowledge. So she never discussed the stuff that she posted or talked to or anything. A few days later, Hannah's mother came home after work. Strangely, Hannah was not there to greet her. I knew she had been there because when I came in from work, she had thrown the mail on the couch. This time, Mona did not look for her, but instead took a nap after a long day of work. A few hours later, she woke up to an eerily quiet apartment. Mona's concern for Hannah quickly turned into panic and fear. She wasn't there, and I called her father because he, they used to have a standing um, dinner date, and he said he didn't have her. And then my heart just sank because she wouldn't go, I mean, I, she doesn't go anywhere else. So then I called her friends, I called several of her friends, and they said that, that she wasn't with them. And then I called the police and reported it. Cops searched the large apartment complex and surrounding neighborhood. There was no trace of Hannah. Later that night, a storm passed over Gainesville. It started raining. And I was just like, oh, she won't stay out in this rain. But then they went out looking for her for, I don't know, a little while and came back and said, you know, that they didn't, they couldn't find her. And um, for me just to hang in there. Mona and Jeff anxiously waited and waited, but Hannah did not come home. The next day, an elderly man was taking a sunset stroll not far from Lake Lanier. He made a gruesome discovery. He looked down to the left in a ravine uh, and could see something he thought was a mannequin. And when he checked further, he noticed that it was a human body. And he had heard about the missing 16-year-old in the apartment complex, and he figured out that it was Hannah. Hannah True Love had been found only a quarter mile from her home, directly behind the apartment complex. Mona and Jeff's precious 16-year-old daughter, the girl with that beautiful smile, had been murdered. Hannah had been stabbed to death multiple times. It was very vicious. To this day, I can't imagine that someone would, would, would kill Hannah, would, would, would do that. I mean, why take a life? Several officers came over and with a, with a chaplain and, um, and then they told me that they had found her. So, and I just lost it. The police knew Hannah was brutally stabbed over and over again. Unfortunately, any clues at the crime scene that could have led to the killer's identity had been destroyed by Mother Nature the night before. Usually in a case 
like this, there's lots of trace evidence to be located at a crime scene, blood, hair, fiber, that kind of thing. That presented a problem in this case because there was a significant, significant rainfall after Hannah was killed and it washed a lot of the trace evidence away. The police now focus their attention on those chilling messages Hannah left on Twitter. Was it a cry for help? The social media messages that Hannah posted about a stalker were an obvious concern for us. The stalker was a guy that was, that was interested in her that she was not interested in. He was interviewed and he was cleared. Another dead end. So who else could have killed Hannah? Sergeant Dan Franklin took us back to the spot where she was last seen alive. Hannah spent most of the afternoon that she went missing in this grassy area. She was playing with some of the boys were playing football. There was a bunch of kids out here. There were several adults out here with some younger children. Around the same time, three unidentified teenagers drove up to the apartment complex just before Hannah disappeared. There was reports from a witness of a car, a silver car. It was a four-door mid-sized sedan, and a black male got out of the back of the car. Uh, he walked around a tree line uh, and out of sight of the witness. About 10 or 15 minutes later, he came walking back into the sight of the witness, and Hannah was walking behind him, not with him but behind him by 10 or 15 steps. And they continued on across the parking lot and behind their building, uh, which is where she was found eventually. However, she was seen alive and well about an hour after that. And so that person is simply a person of interest. Just another piece in an intricate jigsaw puzzle. Six months after Hannah's death, there were no arrests or suspects. Desperate for answers, Mona Harris pleaded for anyone to speak up if they knew anything about her daughter's murder. Please help my family by coming forward with your information, even if that information is about your son or daughter. Who approached Hannah Trulove and asked her to take that fatal walk into the woods? So far, no answers, just theories. To us, the location suggested that Hannah had gone to this, to this area with, with somebody that she knew. We felt that there would have been, with as much activity, as much people that were outside during this time period, if she had been taken against her will to that area, that someone would have heard something. There is a small, small chance that it could just have been a random, it could have been just random, but I believe in my heart that it is someone that she knew. I know that more than one or two people saw it happen and we were afraid to come forth. If they come forth, they'll be fine. Don't not worry about what consequence would be for revealing the killer. We've got to get this solved. She's just a funny, loving, compassionate child that did not deserve anything like this. It's really hard to watch. I mean, you can see the depth of pain, the depth of anguish that this not knowing is causing Hannah's family. This was a young girl whose life was taken far too soon, and that's why we need your help to solve this tragic crime. Police are now offering a $5,000 reward, hoping someone will come forward with information to catch Hannah's killer or killers. You can submit a tip right now on our website, or you can call or text our toll-free tip line that number, one 844 crime